Alright, so before this video starts, I feel like I need to address the elephant in the room. The hunt happened. In this video, I heavily criticized Roblox for various practices that have made their community feel generally bored and abandoned. Among them being Roblox not interacting with the community and getting rid of events, especially egg hunts. And that criticism was written just a couple of weeks before they started interacting with the community a lot more and announced a new event for the first time in years. And this one does technically qualify as an egg hunt, so joke's on me. But I'm still putting this video out, and not just because it took the most work to make out of any other video I've made to date, and I don't want it to go to waste. The hunt is a great start to getting us back on track, don't get me wrong, but it needs work. So much so that I actually plan on making a whole video about it and the other new things Roblox has been doing lately, discussing what's working and what's not, and recommending ways in which Roblox should move forward with the other events that they plan on doing in the future. So stay tuned for that. As for this video, it was written in a time just before we had all this new stuff to look forward to, when it seemed like Roblox could only really go downhill. And aside from it serving as a documentary about egg hunt history, I want it to serve as kind of a reminder of that time, and an affirmation to Roblox and the Roblox community that yes, we are moving in the right direction, we are moving forward. And we aren't even fully out of the woods yet either, like I said, a lot of work still needs to be done, and the majority of the criticisms I levy in this video are actually still pretty valid in my opinion. There's just a few things in here that would seem kinda weird if I didn't clarify that they were written before the hunt. Alright, enough yapping, let's get into the video. So Roblox has gotten extremely boring for me late. This past weekend, I was sitting here on the Discover page, just scrolling through, trying to find something that looked interesting and new to play. And I realized that no matter how many times I scrolled down or scrolled back up, back and forth, I never really found anything. People I think Rolls is boring, number one. Rolls feels very stale. No big games are updating. There's no news. And then all the big games are having their communities turn on them right now because everyone's just angry, you know, begging them to add content and do something with the game. Roblox has gotten boring for me, and if you're watching this right now, you probably have experienced this too. There is a common sentiment that says how Roblox is not fun anymore, and it's almost like a right chore. Today we're going to be talking about Roblox dying because I said in a video not too long ago that Roblox just feels so boring right now. A lot of you guys were agreeing with me as well, just the whole platform and community, it just feels like, I don't know, just like nothing's really happening. The Roblox community is dying. That's a sentiment I've heard thrown around a lot lately from a lot of different people, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I kind of agree. Ever since Roblox went public on the stock market, they've been in an uphill battle to transform into innovative, futuristic-seeming tech bros, please their investors, and make as much money as possible. In the process, they've abandoned any and all efforts to do anything that their sentient older player base wants them to do, resulting in many of them leaving the platform and being replaced with the skibbity toilet kids that account for most of the platform's continued growth today. You know, we've been doing it for 20 years, yeah, I like we we know what we're doing and we're going to keep doing that. In other words, to quote kind of good meal, they're trying to age up the platform but the only people engaged are kids who don't care about the quality of games they play. It's like if you walked into the most popular mall in America but the only stores occupied were selling diapers and fidget spinners. To people who visit the Roblox website for the first time ever nowadays, all they really see is a soulless minimalist white void populated with basically the equivalent of mobile games for PC. There's no personality here. Here, no charm. It's just a mess of corporate drivel, clickbait, and copyright infringement. But it wasn't always this way. Before the investors, before the massive wave of brand sponsors, before all of that, Roblox was a different company. A smaller one, yes, and one that still very much had problems and flaws. Well, it won't take you long to realize that Roblox doesn't give a f about our department. <laughs> We couldn't get any traction on anything and we needed a computer, so I just fucking went and bought the parts and built it. But one that, at the end of the day, generally cared about making their platform as fun as possible for their player base, based on what their player base wanted. They had contests, they had conventions, they had cool and unique website themes, they had creative avatar accessories made by professional artists, and, of course, they had seasonal events, special challenges themed after whatever major holiday was happening at the time that they would work with certain game developers to insert into their games, which would then allow players to win a cool holiday-themed hat upon their completion. And there was no seasonal event more recognizable, anticipated, or beloved by the community than the annual Egg Hunt. The Egg Hunt was a 
phenomenon on Roblox. Even in 2018, when the amount of accounts on Roblox already numbered in the hundreds of millions, it was enough to get tens of those millions unified, all hyped for an incredible adventure that would allow them to win numerous cool prizes, solve challenges, and enjoy an amazing game developed by the best developers Roblox had to offer. Egg hunts were, and still are, incredibly important to the Roblox community, and in fact, I believe that they just might be a key part of how Roblox can get its community to survive into the coming years, which Roblox, like it or not, is necessary for your platform to exist at all. Young kids do increase your numbers, sure, but without older community members, who's gonna buy Robux? Who's gonna make content based on your platform? Who's gonna create games that aren't just mindless clickbaity simulators? I'll expand more upon why I think this later, but first, to truly understand the egg hunt's importance and to learn about what an egg hunt even is if you're new to the platform, I think we need to go back to the beginning. The first egg hunt Roblox ever did. Let's talk about egg extravaganza 2008. Just a second though, I don't know if you've noticed this video's runtime, but I gotta profit off all this effort somehow, so... Patreon! <laughs> Woo -hoo! Yeah! That's right, the Nitro Lord Patreon is now open for business. With it, you can do lots of cool and exciting things, such as give me money, give me money, and last but not least, get your name at the beginning of a video and give me money. Now, but being for real, I do plan on doing some pretty epic Patreon exclusive things as soon as I have the time and college isn't breathing down my neck, like exclusive Q&As, game nights, maybe some emotes, stuff like that. And if you enjoy these kinds of more older audience oriented Roblox videos and want to support me, Patreon's the best way to do it. Links in the description, pitch something in if you want, and without further ado, enjoy the video. The year is 2008. Roblox has been open to the public for only a little less than two years, and they have a slight problem. They've had a special 2006 map, a spooky building contest, and a treasure hunt for Halloween. They've had another special 2006 map and a gift explosion for Christmas. But what about the other major holidays? After Christmas, the next Halloween would be hundreds of days away. The Roblox community couldn't wait for another holiday event for that long. There would be panic and rioting in the streets. It was time to add a new holiday to Roblox's arsenal. Easter was approaching, and Telemon knew exactly what event he had to make to satiate the people of Robloxia. Roblox is hosting an egg hunt, a blog post read. The egg hunt will be happening in all places at the following times. Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 11 a.m. Pacific time, lasting about an hour. Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 11 a.m. Pacific time, lasting about an hour. Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 11 a.m. Pacific time, lasting about four hours. Eggs may show up intermittently at other times, but the above times are the scheduled egg hunt hours. At those times, there will be lots of eggs to be found. We apologize ahead of time to serious bloxers and miked paintball fanatics for egging your game. Now for the twist, there are 11 different types of eggs that you can find in this hunt. Some of them, like the stationary egg of boring, can be captured just by touching them. When you do so, you will hear a trumpet sound indicating that you have won the egg. It will show up momentarily in your My Stuff page. Captured eggs can be worn on your head like a trophy. Other eggs, like the mysterious kind egg of sharing and the puzzling egg of enigma, require you to solve some puzzle or meet some condition before they will allow you to pick them up. There are hints provided in the egg's descriptions. More information about each egg will be slowly revealed in the news section over the next couple of days, so check back there. The reception to this news was generally quite positive. The normal everyday gameplay of every Roblox game at once getting interrupted by falling eggs for players to collect was sure to be a very interesting sight to see, and players were excited to figure out how to get each egg with their friends. As mentioned in the blog post, there were 11 eggs for them to collect. We won't have time in future egg hunts to go over every single egg since there were a lot more in hunts after this, but for this one, let's just take a look at all of them. By far the easiest was the stationary egg of boring. It was a plain bright blue egg egg that would just fall from the sky and be able to be picked up by anyone just by touching it. The blinking egg of relocation was a yellow speckled egg that was quite similar except every few seconds it would teleport a few dozen studs away. The bouncing egg of boing boing had, uh, this texture? I don't know how to describe it for the people just listening to this video, it looks like a singularity got loose in a bubblegum factory. It would bounce around the map a lot until someone touched it and collected it. The invisible egg of shadow was a rare translucent hat with a dark shadowy texture and it could also be collected just by touching it as long as you were able to see it as it intermittently turned visible and invisible. The rest of the eggs were... weirder. The kind egg of sharing was a red and white speckled egg that would drop with the exposure on its texture turned way down. Every time a user touched it, it would lighten up, and the third person who touched it and lightened it up completely would be the only person to be awarded the egg. The puzzling egg of Enigma would, upon being touched, spawn a chessboard, and the person who touched it would have to chat the set of moves necessary for their side to win. The most common correct moveset was Queen to F5, Rook to G8, Knight to E7, and Knight to F6. Players were expected to not only be able to figure out this moveset, but also know the 
correct way to format a chess move shorthand, which I personally didn't even know before researching this video. The golden egg of kings was an egg that would insult the crap out of you if you touched it without wearing any of the only crown hats that existed in 2008. Golden crown, void star, domino crown, ice crown, or black iron crown of ponage, all of which were quite expensive and rare. Back in 2008, a lot more people were able to get this egg because players wearing these rare crowns could take off their hat and allow other players to wear it, but it was still pretty hard to find players willing to help out in this way. Also, you could have just used a hat wearer in your own personal game, but that's not as fun. The bombastic egg of annihilation would float down from the sky and rain rockets on players until somebody managed to touch it and claim it. So unless you were in a game that had flight or teleportation tools, its appearance pretty much meant that your entire server would be royally effed for the next hour. The Wanwood egg of ZOMG would fall down as a massive version of itself that would intermittently shrink, explode, and kill anyone that touched it until it shrunk down to normal size and players could claim it by touching it. The legendary egg of Gygax, my personal favorite even though it doesn't look anything like an egg, would spawn in red and turn green whenever its 20 side was facing up, at which point it could be claimed. And the cracked egg of Ponage could be obtained by killing someone wearing the bunny ears of Caprice, which were given out to all Roblox admins to be worn during the drops. To prevent players from pulling a golden crown of king skip and using hat givers to cheese this, this hat had a script put in it that would cause any non-admins wearing it to immediately explode, which ended up causing some interesting problems for catalog try-on games like Robloxian High School later on. I mean, look at this. Before. All in all, this egg hunt was a major success. The rarest egg of the bunch, the cracked egg of Ponage, was obtained roughly 1,000 times, and the most common was obtained roughly 12,000. Roblox had around 250,000 users at the time, meaning that around 1 in 20 users on the entire platform participated in some way, and 1 in 250 put in enough effort to get the rarest egg of the hunt. With these kinds of numbers, Roblox would have had to be fools to not do it again next year. But don't worry, they got it next year. In April of 2010, Roblox finally decided to hop back on the saddle and do another egg hunt, but with a pretty controversial change. And by controversial, I really mean that literally no one liked it except Builders Club members. Because at this point, I think it's been long enough that many people watching don't know what Builders Club is, which doesn't make me feel old at all, don't worry. Builders Club was Roblox Premium before Roblox Premium. It allowed you access to a whole bunch of Builders Club exclusive features, a sum of Robux every day, more Robux from paid access games, and increased limits to the amount of groups you could join and create. And in in 2010, Roblox decided to introduce another reward to its Builders Club members, the Easter Basket gear. From early 2010, up to when Builders Club got replaced by Premium in 2019 actually, any new Builders Club members would automatically get this Egg Basket gear upon their purchase. And in April of 2010, anyone who was in Builders Club could purchase it for free. And it was only by owning this Egg Basket gear that you could obtain all of the egg hats from collecting all of the eggs. Without it, you were limited to just three. The amount of outrage that this decision spawned amongst the Roblox community cannot be understated. 137 pages of angry free-to-play players flocked to the forums to voice their frustrations on the fateful April day this egg hunt was announced. But despite all of this criticism, Roblox would not budge, and at 2pm PDT on April 2nd, 2010, eggs began falling down from the sky in all Roblox games for largely only Builders Club members to enjoy. But despite that fact, the vast majority of Roblox players still participated in the hunt. After all, it was happening in every Roblox game, and if you're just vibing and work at a pizza place one day and a giant green egg the size of your head fell into your mozzarella, it would raise your eyebrows at the very least. So the eggs were collected in droves. In fact, so many players collected eggs that they literally exploded Roblox's servers and Roblox had to end the hunt early so they could work on getting better servers to accommodate all the traffic. It took until July of 2010 for them to be ready to resume the hunt again. And as a way of saying sorry for keeping everyone waiting, Roblox gave out a free golden egg beater necklace to everyone and added seven new eggs to the hunt, putting the total amount of eggs that could be collected by Builders Club members at 23. They also increased the non-BC egg limit to six. How gracious of them. Like in the 2008 hunt, most of these eggs could be obtained by simply touching them, but they required some very specific conditions to happen for you to actually obtain them once touched, or they had some sort of annoying defense mechanism that made it challenging to touch them in the first place. One particularly cool and challenging one was the Dark Crimson Egg of Nemesis, which I couldn't find any footage of, but apparently it would hover around whatever map it spawned in, fire rockets everywhere, and disappear after just five seconds. Extremely elusive, and undoubtedly one of the coolest looking eggs of the hunt. My friend Bay Area Knights 
made an avatar with it that I really like. There was also an egg called the Starry Egg of Wild Ride that upon you touching it would attach itself to you and fling you all over the map at lightning speed. And your main objective was just to stay alive until it stopped doing that. The Vicious Egg of Singularity would only spawn in at really high altitudes and also explode every so often. The Specular Egg of Red No Blue would rapidly switch from red to blue and explode you if you touched it when it was blue. The Power to the Moon Egg would pull a Team Rocket on you if you touched it. And the Extinct Egg of Dino on Ice required you to explode it out of the block of ice it spawned in. Lots of pyrotechnics in this hunt. This hunt also introduced Fabergé eggs. These were extra special eggs. <laughs> covered in gold and other shiny materials that were meant to be insanely rare. In this hunt, there were five of them, and each one would only spawn in a full server, and even then, still have a very low spawn chance. The most common one, the blue Fabergé egg, was obtained 18,000 times compared to the most common egg of the hunt's nearly 200,000, and the least common one, the golden Fabergé egg of Hive Mind, was obtained only 786 times. Needless to say, many of these eggs were pretty difficult to get, so if players were willing to fork out a little extra cash on top of their Builders Club membership, they could also get a few gears to give themselves advantages, such as the Egg Dentifier 2010, which was 200 Robux and would show you a list of which eggs were in the game you were playing. For 50 Robux, you could get an Egg Compass, which would point you towards the rarest egg in the game. For 75, you could get the Egg Magnet, which would pull any eggs made of metal toward you except Fabergé eggs because screw you. And for 100, you could get the Magic Bunny, which would increase your jump height. It had an evil counterpart called Bad Bad Bunny, which you could use to prank other players by dropping fake bomb eggs. But that was 200 instead of 100. So, in the end, despite instating the annoying Builders Club limitations, this egg hunt was another massive success for Roblox. Players played it so much that they had to invest in server upgrades. They made a lot of profit from gear selling, and even if players couldn't keep all the eggs they got, they still had a lot of fun collecting the eggs. So, of course, in 2011, Roblox canceled the egg hunt again! Yeah, it may be much worse nowadays, but Roblox's streak of not listening to the community isn't exactly new. But thankfully, in 2012, they regrouped, got their act together, and began preparing a brand new egg sighting egg venture. <sighs> Remember how violent some of the eggs in the last hunt were? The ones that exploded, the one that fired rockets at you, the one that yanked you all over the map at light speed? Well, for this hunt, Roblox took that aspect of things to 11, announcing the hunt with the line Ghostly Apparitions, Bloodsucking Fiends, Quantum Vacuum Collapse, Terror Dactyls, at least one of the Doomsday scenarios featured in Engines of Creation. Make no mistake, this is not a Roblox egg hunt. This is psycho killer eggs hunting you for sport. And indeed it was. There was the egg exterminator egg that would fly around and blow up any other eggs it saw. There was the Pterodactyl egg, a rare egg that required you to get killed by a giant poisonous pterodactyl for just the slightest chance of getting it. The egg of all devouring darkness, which played some of the creepiest whispering I've ever heard. <laughs> and then literally shut down your server after it was obtained by someone. There were two eggs, the subterranean egg and the insanely valuable crystal egg that you had to dodge the rising and falling lava inside a volcano to get. And there was the egg timer egg, which would self-destruct if you didn't obtain it in time. Being that it had been two years since the last egg hunt by this point, 2012 brought plenty of new changes to the table. For one, it didn't take place across all games on Roblox this year. This was the first year during which Roblox created a special game specifically for hosting the egg hunt, a practice that continued into the future of the tradition with a few exceptions, but we'll get to that later. While it would have been really cool to have all games on Roblox get egged in the modern era, I love imagining the idea of someone's weird Brookhaven roleplay video getting interrupted by a giant killer egg coming in and deleting their bedroom out of existence. I understand why that wouldn't really be sustainable nowadays. Remember, last time they tried that, their servers stopped working, so trying it in the modern day would almost definitely be a Chipotle Burrito Maze 2.0. But being able to curate the map exactly how they wanted meant that Roblox could really ramp up the level of personality and interesting that the challenges required to get the eggs could have. The best example of this in the 2012 egg hunt was probably the Terror Dactyl egg, but we would see this present itself in much more major ways later on. For now, another change made to the egg hunt meta was an event tie-in. This was the first egg hunt to tie in with another event on Roblox, specifically the sponsored event for the Three Stooges movie. In that event, players could get the Stooge egg by finding it in the underground tunnels of the map and breaking it open with a mallet. And it was required to get the last egg of 2012, which was actually another new tradition that this egg hunt established. By getting 
every single egg available in the hunt, you could obtain the last egg of 2012. And many other egg hunts going forward would have some sort of final egg as well. Egg Hunt 2012 kept last year's idea of having super rare Fabergé eggs for players to collect, though this time around they abandoned the full server requirement and just made them have a very low spawn rate. And they also introduced a second, less popular kind of rare egg, the sugar egg. Three eggs with a sugary, frosted looking texture themed after classic Roblox places would rarely spawn during this hunt. And though not a lot of hunts would have these in the future, a couple of them did. And of course, they sold advantage giving items for Robux, though a lot less of them. There were only three things you could buy to help you in this hunt. The Egg Cannon 9000, which allowed you to shoot certain common eggs, the Egg Lord's Circlet, which increased the Egg Cannon's firing rate and also gave it a low chance of shooting rare eggs like Fabergé's, and the Egg Lord's Rexus, which further increased the Egg Cannon's firing rate and its probability of shooting rare eggs. Oh yeah, and that Builder's Club egg limit was removed. You could collect as many egg hats as you wanted, whether you paid for Builder's Club or not. Players really liked this hunt. The new format and abandonment of all games getting reined in surprisingly received little criticism, and it was considered to be another very successful hunt. That was until... Do you smell it? That smell. A kind of smelly smell. A smelly smell that smells... smelly. <laughs> Exploiters. <laughs> Roblox had never really done an event with such a massive amount of prizes to be awarded in one single game before. There were 24 egg hats to be collected here, each one of which had the potential to go limited at some point in the future. The opportunity was just too good for exploiters to resist, and in the final days of the egg hunt, they began causing chaos. They figured out a way to set up a server-wide GUI that would allow players in the server to get all the eggs they wanted just by clicking some buttons. There are really no rare eggs in this hunt, all of them have tens of thousands of copies, and the reason for that is largely because of these exploiters. The Stooge Egg is actually the rarest one, with around 9,000 copies, simply because it wasn't obtainable in the original 2012 Egg Hunt game. Even worse, someone later managed to implement an exploit that gave tons of accounts created from 2006 to 2008 the last egg of 2012 automatically, without them even having to join the Egg Hunt game. As a result, it's now the most common egg from the whole hunt, at well over 400,000 copies. It kind of ruined the fun for some people who had spent a lot of time working to get all the eggs, only for all of their hard work to be circumvented by tens of thousands of lazy exploit users just before the event ended. But aside from all that, it was a very successful hunt, people loved it, and thankfully, this time around, Roblox was actually able to see that and they finally decided to make it a yearly tradition, with next year's egg hunt. Twenty thirteen was special, not only because it was the first hunt to ever occur on an odd numbered year, but because it was the first year since two thousand eight that there had been an egg hunt where pretty much nothing went wrong. There were no notable exploiters, no server damages, and the egg hunt actually happened that year. What more could you ask for? The map for this year was a lot bigger than the last one. Unfortunately, a lot of it was empty space and plain grass fields, but at least it provided a lot of area for eggs to spawn in. During this egg hunt, we began to see the first semblances of a new kind of egg, an egg that required you to complete a quest to get. It. For instance, there was the Egg of Epic Growth, which you would have to pick up in a hidden room at the top of a tree and then bring over to the water at the base of the waterfall, where it would grow into a giant epic duck and award you the egg. There was also the Egg of Scales, which could be found in a cave and required you to bring it over to a volcano to get it. And of course, there was the Egg of Sorcus, an admin famous for being a troll. This one would spawn under a bridge and players had to feed it seven pieces of spam from a house. Whoever fed it the seventh piece of spam would be awarded the egg. I guess feeding the trolls does work sometimes. That's not the end of the new types of of eggs that were introduced, however. This hunt also introduced eggs that were hidden on the Roblox website itself, and eggs that could be obtained through Roblox Studio. These two kinds of eggs really didn't stick around much past 2013, which is kind of a shame because they were a very creative idea. The website eggs were the easiest egg, which you could have gotten by clicking the egg in the Roblox logo, the advertisement egg, which you could have gotten by clicking a special advertisement, L Adblock users, I guess, and the TLDR egg, which you could have gotten by clicking another special advertisement on the Roblox forums. The studio eggs were the excellent build which you got simply by updating a game, the Egg Stream Builder, which you got by putting a Roblox-made car model into your game, the Exultant Contributor, which you got by uploading a free model, the Egg Explosion, which you got by putting an explosion into your game, the Egg Excruciatingly Deviled Scripter, which you got by printing a lot of text into your script output window, and the Yolks on Us, which you initially had a chance to get by crashing Roblox Studio with the crash command, and then the requirement was changed to putting a part with the name Yolk into a model named Egg. Obtaining all of these eggs would award you a secret seventh accessory called Studio Superstar, 
a red and blue 8-bit top hat. Of course, there were still plenty of eggs you could obtain just by touching them. One of my favorites is extraterrestrial. To get it, a player would have to find an alien parasite lying around. Upon getting close to it, it would jump on your face, poison you to death, and as you died, you would drop the egg, which anyone could then pick up. Not only is it a creative way of spawning the egg, but it's also a major parody of the face huggers from the movie Alien, which is one of my favorite classic horror sci-fi movies. One more interesting feature that this egg hunt introduced, which was unfortunately never used again, was the ability for some eggs to hatch, turning into another item. Although this did have the downside of permanently wiping the original eggs off of Roblox, the items they hatched into were very cool. The extraterrestrial hatched into the Alien Hatchling, which is another reference to the Alien movie, the Egg of Duty hatched into the Bad Blocks Hatchling, the TLDR egg hatched into the Speech Bubble, the Wizards of the Astral Isles egg hatched into the Confused Hat, the Sorcus egg hatched into the Sorcus Stool, and the Egg of Scales hatched into Scaly the Dragon. This hunt was jam-packed with new features and new environments, and players agreed that it was the best one that had happened in a while. It was an unforgettable event that many who played it would hold nostalgia towards for many years to come. The question was, could Roblox do better next year? No. No, they could not. For some reason, in 2014, they really rushed the egg hunt. We don't know exactly when they started development, but generally, it was pretty obvious that it didn't get a lot of development time. The meshes and textures of the eggs were all lower quality than the 2013 ones. The map was entirely made out of terrain, except for the decorations, and very poorly put together terrain at that. They got rid of tons of the new features that they'd implemented in past egg hunts. There were no hatching eggs, no studio eggs, no tie-ins to other events. There was also a ton of glitches and lag. Lag mostly due to the high amount of objects and meshes combined with the 2014 client, which sucked, and glitches... Well, Fabergé eggs spawned inside the map. Some eggs would stop spawning altogether. Gear that people purchased with Robux would randomly break. Eggs people collected didn't go into their inventory. This meant that they couldn't progress to the next stage of the game, even though other parts of the game seemed to know that they had collected the eggs. The minions for the egg aggressor wouldn't spawn. The in-game inventory system wouldn't show all your eggs or would show duplicate eggs. Portals would take 20 plus seconds to bring you from world to world, and the egg of life would spawn in at the tops of trees and never fall to the bottom. But the worst offense that this egg hunt committed for a lot of people was that they couldn't play with their friends. See, this egg hunt actually actually did introduce one new feature that would end up getting carried forward into the future. The hunt revolved around the story of Lucky Lappin, a creepy-faced egg-collecting rabbit who, one fateful day, was kidnapped by the evil Rabbit Rabbit and his army of minions. Their goal was to steal all of Lappin's eggs and thereby prevent him from spreading joy across the universe, but apparently Rabbit hired the most incompetent minions of all time and they lost all the eggs as they traveled across the quote-unquote Eggverse, scattering them across the Eggverse's five worlds. The player was tasked with traveling to each world finding all the eggs there, ultimately defeating Rabbit Rabbit, and saving the Eggverse. Though half-baked, if you stop to think about it for 10 seconds, it was still a pretty compelling story to most players. It was one of the only things they actually liked about this hunt. But Roblox being Roblox, they executed it in the dumbest way possible, by putting each world into its own separate place. If you look at the original Egg Hunt game, you'll notice that it had a server size limit of just one. The actual world places allowed more players, but the initial lobby area could only hold one player. This meant that every time you'd visit a new world, the people you'd be playing with would be completely randomized. There was no way for you to join your friends and hunt eggs together, which was half the fun of egg hunts prior. I don't know, it's not even really worth mentioning this egg hunt in the grand scheme of things. None of the eggs were really anything new. The most creative one was probably the malicious egg, which would spawn as a fake version of a different egg and then spawn a few minions for you to fight. There were also a couple of website eggs, but they were nothing special either. Oh, and there was also this. So I guess I want to give you the, the heads up on where we're going, and that is we're, we're going to make a complete uh, transition to cats and uh, standard humanoid shapes we're gonna replace with a cat shape we, we just think it's gonna allow everyone to think a little differently so so look for this uh, your character will turn into a cat all games will be cat centric you know the future's now so I think you'll like it But aside from that gloriousness, Egg Hunt 2014 was really just part one to a two-part blemish on Egg Hunt history that also included... Egg Hunt 2015 has been called many things. Boring, dull, full of lazy, rushed, last-minute garbage, a disappointment. Now you may be asking yourself, how could it possibly get worse than 2014? That hunt had hardly any development time, bare bones eggs, a paper thin storyline, and no way to even play with people you wanted to play with. There's no way they didn't fix at least some of those issues, right? 
an entire year after that mess of a game, how could it even be remotely possible for the creators of the platform the hunt would take place on to create a worse game? Well, what if they didn't even create a game at all? This was so much worse than anything anyone could have predicted. Rather than creating personalized, unique scenarios for each egg to be found in, Roblox elected to just throw them into three popular games, Super Bomb Survival by Polyhex, Ripple's Minigames by Ripple, and Twisted Murderer by Taymaster. Just five exclusive eggs were assigned to each game, and there were also seven eggs that could be found in all three. The hunt had a total of 22 eggs, nearly two-thirds the amount that 2014 had. And the thing is, it could have been successful. The egg hunts started out as simple drops, that happened in every Roblox game at certain hours of the day. That was proof that they didn't need an egg hunt game, just as long as the eggs were good. But the eggs weren't good. It seemed that, without the necessity to put an effort towards an egg hunt game, Roblox lost their desire to put an effort towards the actual eggs as well, both in terms of their meshes and textures, many of which still weren't as good as many of the 2013 eggs, and in terms of their means of obtaining, which were decided by the developers of the games they were available in, and many of which were frankly lackluster. One of them was obtained by playing a certain song on a radio gear. One of them was obtained by wearing a hat from 2008 or earlier. Far too many of them would just appear in certain hard-to-reach places and were obtainable just by touching them. Again, like with 2014, this egg hunt really isn't worth talking about. There was no creativity behind it, no passion, no soul. By this point, it was clear that something needed to change. If Roblox wasn't willing to create a good egg hunt game, someone else would have to. The 2015 egg hunt disappointed a lot of people, one of them being the once popular hat retexturer Hawaiian Snowman, who soon after the egg hunt concluded, began working on his own fan-made egg hunt game. Dubbed the Quest of Excellence, this hunt was slated to feature nearly 20 eggs to be collected. He only got as far as drafting up concepts for these eggs, mind you, but just from the concept art alone, we can already tell that many of these eggs were going to be much better than pretty much anything Roblox had made since 2013. Many of them looked less like the simple egg mesh that Roblox had used for so long and more like unique handcrafted hats. I came up with about a hundred different egg ideas that I still have all typed down, and then these are the ones I actually was able to make out of current Roblox meshes uh -huh. and just retexturing them. Right. At the same time, Roblox was getting bombarded with criticism of their failed dev hunt idea. People were very vocal in their hatred of Egg Hunt 2015, to the point where they simply couldn't ignore it. They needed a good Egg Hunt pronto. So, Roblox and Hawaiian Snowman approached each other, performed a fusion dance, and with the help of a slew of other top tier developers, brought into the world Egg Hunt 2016 an excellent adventure. The egg count was still pretty low. Only 26 eggs were in this hunt, and you could only legally get 24 of them because one of the eggs, the nesting egg, had three variants and you had to choose only one of them. However, the quality of this hunt was vastly improved. For one thing, it was back to one bespoke, well-built map that all of the eggs would spawn in, and the amount of eggs that required a good amount of effort to get significantly outnumbered the freebies that would just randomly spawn in places. Sure, there were a few eggs, like the basic egg and the nesting egg, which would spawn pretty much anywhere, but there was also the fiery dragon, which required you to slay a giant dragon with a sword. The Egg of Four Wonders, which required four different people to work together to find pieces of the egg and bring them to a giant sundial. And the Dodge Egg, which would occasionally be thrown by the mean egg structure instead of his usual dodgeballs that he'd throw to prevent you from getting to him. My favorite, hands down, is the Fabrains Egg. This one was by far the hardest to get, but also the coolest looking one in my opinion. In order to get it, you first had to complete all of the quests needed to get the Mystical Egg Chemist, which upon completion would give you the Mystical Egg Chemist Egg Hat, as well as an in-game reward. A bottle of potion. When you had this potion, it allowed you to see tiny pink crystal shards all over the map. There were 100 of these to collect, and anyone in the server who had a full potion bottle could collect them. Once the server members collected all 100 shards, it would be erased to the graveyard, which they would find crawling with zombified versions of popular Roblox community members. Players needed to fend off the zombies and stay in the graveyard for as long as possible until the mausoleum at the center eventually opened. The first person to the open mausoleum would find the Fabrain's egg inside. Upon someone collecting it, the entire server would lose their potion bottles and have to get to work hunting down all 100 of the shards again. 
a nightmarish quest for those particularly unlucky Robloxians who would keep getting beaten to the punch, but that was what made it fun. I didn't play the 2016 egg hunt when it came out, I joined a little bit too late for that, but if I had and I'd put all that work into getting that egg, whether or not I got it, it would probably be an experience I'd be quite nostalgic for today. This hunt definitely wasn't without its problems. Even though the eggs were better quality than 2014's and 2015's, they still weren't amazing, and also the map had a noticeable amount of glitches and imperfections early on. But, to many, it was a sign of good things to come. Roblox, or rather Hawaiian Snowman who did most of the work, had changed the tide and finally made another egg hunt that the majority of the community generally enjoyed. And, hopefully, next year, they'd be able to continue that streak. Another year passed, and before long, it was April of 2017, and it was time for the moment of truth. Could Roblox run another egg hunt even better than before? Was last year just a minor fluke, or were the egg hunts truly on the up and up again? Well... Fun fact, Roblox literally invented the free cam feature for the express purpose of filming that trailer. This thing blew people away. Everyone and their mother was excited to play this game. I could spend hours listing off every good thing about it, but I think you can already tell from the trailer, it smashed every other egg hunt map that had been created before it by a landslide. I should point out that Roblox deserves practically no credit here. It was all built by the incredibly talented elite builders of Robloxia Group, and pretty much all Roblox did was approve all of the eggs and map concepts. They actually ended up nerfing EBR's creativity a little bit. They'd originally wanted to put over 50 eggs in the hunt, but Roblox forced them down to 43 which is still more than double the amount in Egg Hunt 2016, so no complaints here, but just something to know. Egg Hunt 2017 succeeded at everything Egg Hunt 2014 tried to do and more. It revolved around a fun, creative storyline with multiple different worlds for players to explore, all localized into one place so they could actually play with friends. The eggs were miles better than any eggs Roblox had ever made. The textures and meshes were so detailed and unique, some of them didn't even look like eggs at first glance. It even managed to work in well-executed terrain. And not only did EBR create a great main storyline for this hunt, hunt about returning a Fabergé egg to its rightful place under a giant tree and saving the eggverse, they threw in a whole separate side plot for players to uncover as well. By completing a bunch of super hard secret quests and ultimately returning a powerful lava crystal to a group of cultists, you would unlock the secret stratosphere settlement world, inside of which you'd find the coveted EBR egg. That's a whole other world and questline they made just for one egg. The dedication and passion that EBR had for this hunt was insane. It was clear to see all throughout the hunt. It ended up smashing the concurrent concurrent players record that the 2016 egg hunt had set, pulling nearly 40,000 concurrent players at one point, which was a lot for 2017. It had its flaws, of course, like a weird amount of empty space in certain areas and a smattering of random bugs and glitches, but that's to be expected from any game early on, especially one that was developed in just a few months. Honestly, considering the year in which it was built and the deadline they had to build it within, it would have really been hard to imagine anyone being able to make anything better. And then, 2018 rolled around. So, a little bit of a spoiler alert for the video, for those who don't know what Egg Hunts 2019 and 2020 were like, skip forward a few seconds if you don't want to hear it. I consider Egg Hunt 2018 The Great Yoke Tales to be by far the best Egg Hunt I've ever gotten the privilege of playing when it was released. I joined Roblox in September of 2016, so I was unfortunately too late for the 2016 hunt, and I somehow completely missed that the 2017 hunt was even happening. I didn't even know the Egg Hunt tradition was a thing until I saw the 2018 one. But let me tell you, when 13 13 year old me saw this hunt, he was completely blown away. Back then, my parents had a hard limit on how much computer time I was allowed to have. I could only play stuff online for like an hour max, and when this hunt came out, I spent every minute of that time grinding for those eggs and loving every second of it. Egg Hunt 2018 was built by Fifteam, another squad of elite Roblox game devs similar to elite builders of Robloxia, except with one more year of egg experience.
And just like Egg Hunt 2017 did to Egg Hunt 2014, this one vastly improved on its predecessor's imperfections. I mean, forget the eggs for a second, just look at these worlds. They're so vibrant and alive feeling, there's so much in them, it doesn't feel like they left any empty space whatsoever, every little bit of these worlds has personality and charm. And the eggs, if you thought 2017's eggs looked almost not like eggs, check out some of these beauties. This one is just a giant painted rose with an arrow through it, and this one is literally just a giant hamburger on a skewer. It's insane that they allowed these to be actual egg designs, and I love them for it. Seriously, I don't actually want to show too much of this game, because even though you can't get the egg hats anymore, I still think it's a genuinely fun playthrough experience. Its storyline is miles more cohesive than 2014, 2016, and 2017, there are multiple bosses and genuinely challenging quests to complete, and like 2017, it has a whole other side plot where you have to find a bunch of super hidden puzzle pieces in order to get to an insane heaven realm obby chock full of references. At the end, you get to literally meet God and find the ultra rare super secret 15 egg. I remember it took me practically an entire day to get this, though that might have been because I was newer to Roblox and didn't know how to do obbies. And it was one of the most fun days I ever had on Roblox, period. Oh yeah, and I can't do this segment without at least mentioning the Ready Player One event, a Roblox-wide hunt to be the first person to find and win the legendary Dominus Venari. I didn't participate in that event because I had enough foresight to know that a kid who was restricted to only being online for an hour a day would probably not get to the coveted one of one prize that people were sending literal death threats over first, but from what I've heard from most people who did play it, it was really fun. And as it turned out, the final hiding place of that golden dominus was inside Egg Hunt 2018. Partway through the hunt, they added an extra egg that only a few people in existence knew was going to be added. Not even everyone on the Egg Hunt dev team knew. Players who found all the keys up until that point had to find this egg, and from there they would be teleported to complete the final leg of the hunt. Again, didn't play this event, but I sort of regret that now because I probably would have found it really fun. This was the best egg hunt, like objectively speaking. I know some of you probably have nostalgia for other hunts, and that's perfectly fine, but on pretty much every level except Egg Amount, it's pretty hard to argue that this hunt didn't absolutely knock every other hunt out of the park. And that's kind of worrisome, because there's still two more years that we have yet to talk about. 2019 is when Roblox's desire to have everyone else do the work for the egg hunt and to contribute to their community as little as possible began to go supernova. It expanded to critical mass and then collapsed in on itself in a massive, fiery explosion of disappointment. It was a dark omen of the worst part of egg hunt history repeating itself, except this time around, there was no telling whether it would get better. Yep, that's right. For this hunt, they just threw a bunch of eggs into some random games again. It was Dev Hunt 2015-2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> to be fair, this was better than 2015. The eggs were much more detailed and unique. There were many more eggs, 58 of them to be exact, and they did actually make a central hub game that contained a few boss fights and challenging obbies to comprise some sort of storyline. But immediately upon joining this hub, it was already plain to see by the stretched spinning egg PNGs that not nearly as much effort was put into this hunt as the 2018 one. The challenges required to get many of these eggs were lackluster, with a few of them just randomly appearing in certain places and requiring only a player's touch to be obtained. Parts of the map were straight up broken, with players being able to fall through the floor in this house thing. Some of the games involved in the hunt didn't even have mobile support, meaning that mobile users could only get a maximum of 53 eggs. Despite how futuristic this hunt looked on the surface, it was clear to any egg-experienced egg hunt players that we had regressed several steps backward with it, and things would only only get worse with... With Egg Hunt 2020, players' worst fears were realized, as Roblox once again did away with a bespoke Egg Hunt dedicated game entirely. This was the Agents of Egg Hunt. Players were meant to act as secret agents tasked with traveling across Robloxia and securing all of the eggs that lay hidden in numerous games. An interesting storyline in theory, but with no game to tie everything together, it rang pretty hollow for most players. All Roblox really did was upload a free egg phone gear to the catalog that players could keep track of their eggs with and send them a little message once they had collected all the eggs, congratulating them on their hard work and awarding them the Fabergé egg of the new decade. 53 eggs made up this event, and when it came to how they would be obtained, each one was at the mercy of the devs of whichever game it got thrown into. Many devs didn't really have the time to make a Roblox egg hunt worthy quest for their eggs, but wanted to be in the hunt anyway because it was good publicity. This led to their egg quests feeling quite rushed and lazy. And if we're being honest, most people just YouTube tutorialed each egg, which isn't the fault of Roblox, it's just the fault of it being the modern era now, but it still kind of sucked the fun out of things a little bit. In general, everyone knows 2020 as the bad year. 
The year COVID started, the year everyone was stuck inside, the year being chronically online reached an all-time high and stayed that way. But it was also the year of another terrible tragedy that only Roblox veterans know. It was the year that the Roblox egg hunt officially died. They warned us. They warned us from the very beginning. In April of 2019, Roblox put out a post on the dev forum announcing Live Ops. This was the start of their brand new initiative, an initiative to have the players of Roblox make pretty much all of the content on the Roblox platform while Roblox Corp would sit back and take cuts of everyone's earnings. A terrible idea to every sane Roblox player, but one that was sure to draw forth the eyes of investors. And the first thing to go was seasonal events. Roblox would no longer be putting in any effort to create fun seasonal challenges themselves, instead opting to let game devs try their hands at creating their own events and featuring some of them on their daily updated live ops page. That's right, daily. Each event could only be featured for 24 hours, and the devs wouldn't be given permission to award hats as prizes either. We encourage you to add in-game prizes as part of your live ops event. Roblox is unable to provide catalog prizes for these community-driven events. And then they put the program on hold in November, and never resumed it again. Perhaps as a result of its abject belovedness by the community, the Egg Hunts stuck around a little longer after this announcement. We got Egg Hunt 2020, and then, in 2021, Roblox tried a new thing called Metaverse Champions, which was kind of like the Egg Hunt, except instead of collecting eggs, we were collecting crates themed after four different characters, and we needed a certain amount of crates to receive a new prize each week. It was lazy, many of the game's challenges were clearly rushed and slipshod, one of the games was paid access, and one of the challenges was so hard that only a little under 5,000 people people completed it. It was a shell of the Egg Hunt's former self, and it was a pathetic death knell for the most beloved event in Roblox history. At the end of the Metaverse Champions event, if you had 30 crates, you and 10 other players who also had 30 crates could go find the 11 hidden pads around the main hub map and stand on them. If all 11 pads were stood on by players with 30 crates at once, a portal would open, allowing players access to a room with tributes to every single Egg Hunt egg that had come before, from Egg Stravaganza to Agents of Egg. In the center, a final, glowing, ethereal egg. Those who touched this egg would receive the tiny egg of non-existence, a tiny invisible troll egg that Telemon himself had uploaded at the very start of Egg Stravaganza 2008 to confuse players, with no plans on ever making it actually obtainable. But now, in an act of bittersweet send-off, it was. And in the description of the badge you would also be awarded, a final message from Roblox, which read, Goodbye. third try, but I did pretty good. Alright, so that's a dragon egg. Give me that. Thank you. You've received the fabric. No way. Jag. What? Doesn't really matter. Jump down here, jump down, and then bam. There's the EBR egg right there. Ta-da! There we go. They're all activated. It should kill them now. Let's go! This green hired up over the violets. I love that. Alright, we got it. Sick. Here we go, guys. Inside this church is the 15 egg. Oh my god.
It just, it just sucks, dude. It just sucks, man. Like, I, I, I'm never gonna be happy about this. Like, like I, they, there's not a single thing that's gonna make me like be like, oh yeah, this is a good idea. I, I, I'm never gonna, gonna be happy about this. You see, egg hunts weren't just another event on Roblox. They were a part of its identity. Every meaningful thing in a person's life has an identity, a set of distinct, recognizable features that can't really be found in precisely the same way in any other thing. Sure, this supposed thing may grow and change over time, but the core parts of its identity should always stay the same. If those disappear or change too much, well, we can't really call this thing the thing that it is anymore, can we? The majority of Roblox's player base that can count past 10 got into Roblox in the first place because it had an identity that they liked. Simple, plastic, low-poly block people exploring and battling it out in worlds made of simple 3D objects. Admins that were very down to earth and constantly joking with and interacting with players. A catalog of avatar accessories and a trading system that, while heavily moderated, allowed the coolest and most creative accessories created by actual, experienced, and passionate artists to stand out and become very highly valued. And events that, while sometimes sponsored, didn't usually focus entirely on the sponsor, and instead acted as fun, well-themed ways to let the best developers on Roblox show off their work and allow players to earn free accessories is designed by the best professional artists that Roblox had to offer. Roblox, all of those things I just described are what made you, you. You gained over 2.25 billion users from 2006 to 2021, the year when you went public on the stock market. That is how you gained those users, Roblox. Everything I just described, that is what your 2.25 billion loyal fans loved about your platform. Why else do you think 95% of the games that everyone loves and talks about nowadays are in that simple blocky style? Blocks Fruits, Brookhaven, Natural Disaster Survival, Work at a Pizza Place, Tower of Hell, I Want to Test the Game, literally every Roblox horror game lately. None of these these games use that realistic Arthro style that you guys have been pushing, or any new features like AI-generated avatars or that weird FaceTime calling system that I'm not even sure is even available anymore because I've never seen it in a game ever. And in just the few short years you've been trying to appeal to investors, you've completely stripped away that identity. Your platform is not the community-run codependent utopia you wanted it to be, it's an apocalyptic anarchic wasteland where it feels like no one's in charge anymore, everyone can get scammed, hacked, or groomed at a moment moment's notice with little to no chance of anything being done about it, corporations and greedy developers alike are in a race to the bottom to exploit your negligence and create the most money-making games and accessories possible, no matter how inappropriate or clickbaity they are, and the only thing you guys seem to be doing about it is adding pointless features and updates that no one's asked for but sound good to investors. We all love using that FaceTime call feature, said no one ever, and actively taking away features that are good for the platform, that are a part of that original identity I described earlier because they're not good enough at making you money. But again, I must ask, if those features that you're moving away from, the blog, seasonal events, a catalog moderated heavily by you guys, the simplistic blocky aesthetic, if those features are bad for your platform, then where the f do you think those 2.25 billion users came from? While your numbers may still be growing at a pretty impressive rate, that's really just because the human population is growing at a pretty impressive rate. Despite how much you say you want to age up your platform, most of your newest users are only online because parents nowadays think an iPad is just as good as a pacifier. The actual community that wants to stick up for you as a company, support you monetarily, and make genuinely fun memories by playing your games is dwindling. Rapidly. And quite frankly, we're also tired. Tired of you focusing all of your efforts on updates that are quite literally the complete opposite of what people are asking for, failing to fix the many broken things on your platform, and generally ignoring your community's existence as a whole. Doing that long enough will inevitably cause that community to wither away and die entirely. You can take that route and just be a mindless corporate zombie that no one likes, raking in dough from the parents of preteens and keeping our modern society's steam locomotive towards dystopia chugging right along. Or you can listen to Creecraft. Bring back classic events, all right? Just do it. I guarantee you, okay? I guarantee you, you will have the highest engagement ever, okay? Bring back egg hunts. Bring back seasonal events. Shoot, bring back the sponsored movie tie-in events. Just bring them all back, man, because four years ago, you said, hey, we're going to let the community make their own events. It's been four years. It hasn't happened. It's not working. We got to change it up. Bring them back. Let's do it. Because here's the thing, Roblox. You can make a lot of money 
nostalgia it makes a lot of money i mean look at fortnite look at call of duty look at world of warcraft making a lot of money you want some money yeah yeah bring back classic events let's make it happen i'm gonna link the video that that clip came from in the description because if you haven't watched it you really should i think it pretty much perfectly describes the points i'm trying to make here and it includes actual specific examples and statistics to back those points up i know creekcraft isn't for everyone but if there's one video you should ever watch from him in your life it should probably be that one and if by some miracle someone who works at that Roblox happens to be watching and got this far in the video, I want you to take that video and show it to your boss, show it to your coworkers, show it to everyone you can. Any changes that I could possibly recommend you guys make to make your platform a better place are explained perfectly over there. And I really do hope that one day, some way, somehow, the points that I, Creek, and the rest of the Roblox community have been making for years now are actually acted upon. Because Roblox, if they aren't, the consequences will be extraordinary. Boy, that sure was a long one. It was so long, in fact, that I kind of don't want to do the Q&A this video, because if I'm being honest, I know that half of y'all probably stopped watching partway through, so I think I'm going to postpone answering Q&A questions to next vid. But for the loyal viewers that did get this far, I will announce that contest I mentioned last video, because someone's got to keep doing classic events, and if it's got to be me for now and not Roblox, so be it. In the spirit of this video and the long-beloved egg hunt tradition, I want you guys to build an egg hunt of your very own. Try to build it in the style of classic Roblox, you know, low poly meshes, studs and bricks everywhere, classic Roblox accessories, all that kind of stuff. It can have any theme you want other than that. It just has to be an egg hunt and it has to be classic. To keep things organized, submissions will be in a special channel in my Discord server, so be sure to join that if you haven't already. The top three hunts will be awarded this special trophy accessory completely for free, and submissions will hopefully be judged live on YouTube, so get excited for that. I've never streamed before, should be fun. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching the entirety of this long, long video. I've been Nitro Lord, and I will see you all next time. Bye!